Hello and welcome back to Where Are You From? But where are you from? I forgot the name of the podcast. This is a podcast by Be Seen, Britain's East and Southeast Asian Network. I'm your host, Viv Yao, and with me is my co-host, Charlie. Woo! I'm back. This is, my <laughs> first, this is my first podcast back this season, so thanks for having me back. Glad I didn't put, it up, put you all off last time. Did you, do you feel a bit rusty at the moment? Yes. <laughs> Can you not tell I, the way I'm stumbling over my words? I do too, you know. I feel like I've forgotten how to um, talk and the name of the podcast and everything. I was about to say, it was a belting start when you didn't get the name right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Um, and with us are two very special guests from the Little Yellow Rice Co. We have Hanny. Ha- <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we have... <laughs> Hannah! Hannah! Hannah, right, how do you say your surname? Is it Ho- Ho- Hosani? Hosani. So, as you say, Hosani. phonetic. Hosani. Hos- Hosani. Yeah. Hannah Natalie Hosani. And we also have Rob Allen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you both? Happy New Year. How, how have you both been celebrating Lunar New Year? Um, we haven't really got going on it. Yeah, I'm still a little bit um, sad that I've not been able to go back to Kent and have my new with my mum mm-hmm. in our favourite um, Chinatown restaurant in London, Imperial Garden. It's a small plug there for them. Um, <laughs> so Turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> what is this unprofessional malarkey we're doing here? I thought you were media trained, Hannah. <laughs> that, that was from my reminder to tell me that I'm doing this. Oh, <laughs> nine minutes late. <laughs> Um, so we haven't really got into it. So mm. they, our celebrations kind of will start from this point onwards, I think, in our the mm-hmm. next kind of 16, 16, 14 days now countdown with events and such, celebrating with your good selves on the, with Dim Sum on Sunday. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm well excited for that. Um, what, what other kind of, do you have any other traditions that you follow over Lunar New Year? Um, generally I well I've had, had my hair cut yeah my nails yep. done tried to do a swift clean let's see the nails the um by our good friend Ooh. little tiger what? and Rue. oh is that a tiger whoa yeah but, um, and normally I just well I normally go home and celebrate with my mum and we always go into London mm-hmm. um but still that's still on hold with uh, my mum at the moment mm. um so yeah you guys gonna be my make my make do family my manchester ec family instead oh i feel like there's been quite a lot of that this year where we're kind of making our own traditions because people haven't been able to go back home or people usually don't celebrate it and they're wanting to try to make new traditions with their friends in different ways so yeah i'm happy we're doing something this sunday to celebrate do you have any mm. traditions that you want to instigate Robert, it's part of the Lunar New Year. Um, well, obviously, it's all very much new to me, and <laughs> I can't say in the past I ever celebrated it as such. Do you um, just want to just want to do belly pork? But yeah, Ooh, yeah, nice. I mean, like for me, it's very much about um, the food mm-hmm. uh, centers around that. Um, we didn't get to like do anything yesterday because I was on a, a twelve-hour um, shift. Um, so yeah, we've done a big wing yip shop this morning amazing Uh, we're getting ready for our events um so i'm looking forward to that i did have pineapple i have got pineapple cakes which is a very Mm. malaysian thing that i got from uh, rumble london so i've had those that's about as far as i've got with being festive right now sounds delicious now talking about malaysia that's kind of a segue into my next question who says i'm rusty at this (laughs) but where are you from tell us more so I am a mixed heritage. So my mum is Chinese Malaysian of Peranakan descent, um, which is a lovely melting pot of um, all the people around Malaysia and all the surrounding um, countries. So I think that heritage is, it goes back to Hainan in China. Um, but I suspect my grandmother, because she was adopted, we think that she was a little bit Singaporean. So we are very Pranakan mixed Mm -hmm. and my dad is from Mauritius so um, I have uh, an interesting blend of culture and cuisine 
that I like to uh, embrace the food on. What's that? What about you, Rob? Uh, not quite as exciting, really. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's uh, white, by the way. <laughs> Anyone's wondering? Uh, definitely not prana can. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was born in the East Midlands, uh, Wolverhampton. It's the West Midlands. Um, West Midlands. <laughs> This is, how, how, this is how much attachment I have to my own heritage. I just yeah. thought, I don't even remember it. That's, um, that's got a lot of heritage in the black country. Um, there is that. The, the triple cooked chips is a thing, apparently, isn't it? In Wolverhampton. Yeah. Uh, There's black, a lot of uh, synergy black, between black pork as well. Black pudding. I black black pudding. You can't claim, yeah, you can't claim black See, pudding. That's, that's all like, we've got going for us in the north. Where my love of crispy oh, pork it's kicking country. off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, I'm not, I wouldn't. I always say to people, I don't really feel like I'm from anywhere because I've sort of <laughs> never, I've never lived in like one place long enough to grow like an yeah. attachment to it. That's a separate podcast. Um, You're a child of the world. Um, so yeah, more and I think that just means that um, it's made me a lot more receptive and open to other cultures and traditions mm. and sort of being open-minded. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Do you know anything about your ancestry, Rob? Like where your um, family came from? Not a huge amount. Um, I think as far back as I remember, we are just, uh, you know, very much white British. Um, my surname's Alan, so I'm guess A W L E N. So I'm guessing there's probably some Celtic, Scottish, or Irish uh, ancestry. Mm. And then um, my granddad was Polish, so got some eastern european um heritage as well we there we go as well. we did try and embrace your polish heritage when i took you to poland <laughs> and, like, and uh, just embarrassed me because i didn't know any of the, the language or, yeah. <laughs> we're very inclusive here though rob you don't have to speak the language to embrace the culture um well they speak I... better english than like <laughs> i do most of the time i think that was an unfortunate position because we went to see my my best friends that are both very strong women so that uh that wasn't the great introduction to poland with them asking you why don't you know more about your polish heritage oh that is like a very triggering question though i think for people who don't know the language of their ancestry yeah so yeah yeah it's okay bro we got you we got you thanks <laughs> So tell us about yourselves then, like the, let, let the listeners know a bit about yourself, paint a picture. Um, I'd like to focus on the fact that you both love going to raves and partying quite a lot. Uh, please tell us about that. And then also later on, tell us about Little Yellow Rice Co as well. Um, so Robert and I met through food when I was consulting and Rob was in the kitchen um, and Rob shouted across the kitchen, Oh, I follow you on Instagram. You've just been a Ibiza. Um, so that's <laughs> obviously when we realised we're kindred spirits. And um, that's definitely like the two things that we have in common are with our love of kind of music and food. Mm. Um, and I think we're very, we're in a fortunate position that we can still go out and um, enjoy music. And that's definitely my outlet. What's definitely our outlet is to still go out and enjoy good music Um meet interesting people and uh, kind of live in a city where there's great venues so mm. uh, though we are a little bit picky you know on where we go now because you're getting a little bit older to middle age you can't really go to a student night it's a little bit frowned on so <laughs> it's a bit creepy I do, have to, I do have to shout at Hannah and say no we can't go to that one we'll just be surrounded by children yeah uh, unfortunately <laughs> when you really love UK Garage you know a lot of those nights are very much younger Mm. so so just going back to how did rob end up following you on instagram like and then like how like how did you yeah, find um, each other well i i started working for a new uh it was a startup business in leeds um called lean lunch which was the sort of concept behind it was to provide um sort of convenient healthy nutritious meals to sort of uh, office workers in town so they'd, they'd order online and then it was independent so it then get delivered um by us like to them for their lunchtime mm -hmm. um so yeah i was helping start that up and develop all the the menu and sort the kitchen out and 
because it was a startup, they wanted marketing um, help. So that was where you got involved, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think I just saw, because I was following like Lean Hunter on Instagram, I think they reshared, you had reshared one of the meals I you'd mean, received. Well, and... just, just tell it how it is. You were going through the <laughs> likes on the business account <laughs> and you no, saw me and then you just started following me. <laughs> and you were like, I want a bit of that. Why Why didn't you slide into the Instagram DMs? Why Why did you decide that shouting across the kitchen was uh, the, the way to go? There was a little bit of confusion on the DMs, to be honest, Charlie. So Robert did send me a DM, but <gasps> I had misunderstood it. Um, because did you ego his DM? Did I what? Ego his DM. Like, what ignore his DM. Is no. that a, that's a, no, no, sorry, that's that a Gen Z thing. I'm Gen Z. Ego. <laughs> wow. Ego. Like, right. if you ego yeah. someone, you're ignoring them. <laughs> like, E-G-O, ego. Yeah. All right, cool. Never heard that before. No, he sent me a DM to say that we should go networking, but being, you know, a businesswoman and I'll put, very much... I put networking, though, in... Funny in, is. In, yeah, in very commas. <laughs> but I thought he <laughs> actually... Funny emoji. Yeah. <laughs> you thought yeah, you're going like... to take her to a bunny networking conference where there's lots of rabbits there. Which, you know, you know, I love, I love my rabbits. So yeah. I yeah. legitimately thought he wanted to go networking so I said oh let's go to Leeds Digital Drinks I didn't realize that it was like an actual <laughs> invitation to go out on a date or something so there was a little bit of confusion with the DM situation <laughs> so that but that wasn't your first date though or was that your first date going to a networking event together uh no I think the first well it wasn't really a date we just sort of like one night we're just like messaging like oh what are you up to and I just happened to be in of our uh, opposite of nightclub in Leeds and Hannah <laughs> was in the, your house Hannah was in the bar opposite oh. uh, so I was just like oh yeah this this night I'm at is not very good I'll just go and meet you so then we just uh, met in the in the sh middle of the street outside why not so romantic <laughs> <laughs> so romantic slash a little bit creepy from Rob's part <laughs> okay oh look at this I'm just conveniently right next to where you are yeah, <laughs> yeah. How can be a really small place, and it was November yes. and he didn't have a coat, so I was already thinking that's a red flag. You were like, "Great, what am I going to do with this one?" Yeah. And how many years has it been since then? Four and a, four, four and a half. And a quarter. Four and a <laughs> quarter, quarter years. <laughs> quarter. Rob knows exactly when, and three days and twenty-four hours mm -hmm. and six minutes. I know. I think <laughs> a lot of people assume that we must have been together much longer, but I think that when you're a bit older, you you just have, your your kind of relationships mature a bit faster. Mm. I don't know. They or do actually, yeah. Maybe because we basically worked together for three of those four years and lived together and had lockdown twenty four hours together. Wow. So yeah. That I mean, really filled that's make that or time. break. All of those, all of the above, mm. is make or break. Um, so we'd love to hear more about um, Little Yellow Rice Co. and the fact that you, you are both the co-founders of Little Yellow Rice Co. Can you tell us about the brand, why you started it, everything, the whole origin story, please, Marvel style, go. Um, I, well, I'll talk about the origin and then Robert can talk about, um, because he's very particular with the food. Mm -hmm. um, so Little Yellow Rice Co. was something I had on my mind for about 10 years before I did it. Um, it's, um, it's basically a heritage brand um, that is a tribute to my family, so the Ui clan. Um, our name roughly translates to yellow, so that's why it's Little Yellow Rice Co. Mm -hmm. um, and I really just wanted to kind of give like Puranakan and Nonya food a bit of visibility because I could kind of see that dying out. Um, like my own, all my own cousins and family there don't really celebrate Nonya food or mm. um, they're more interested in kind of buying in the Western like they love they love pizza they love Italian food and they don't really go like hunting for all those street hawker stores you know that and I feel like a little bit of that knowledge is is disappearing so I wanted to make sure that they for the next generation they kind of are aware mm -hmm. of our heritage where we came from um my great granddad came from Hainan um and left our ancestral clan house that's still there with his first wife and our oldest his oldest daughter and went to Malaysia and set up a coffee shop. So I think I'm the next person along in the family other than that coffee shop to have continued our food heritage kind of lineage sort of thing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and everything around like little yellow rice coat is a nod back to being grateful for him making that migration to Malaysia, setting up a business, having 10 children, um, my granddad's being the oldest and um, kind of, <laughs> there he is, <laughs> Biff, Biff's framed the photo of my great granddad, yeah. which is not, it's not weird. It's fine. It's lovely. It's a lovely, lovely nostalgic touch. Yeah. yeah. Pop that down now. That's weird. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of all about them and it's uh, about the time I spent kind of growing up in Malaysia. I was really, really fortunate um, to live in Malaysia from kind of being 18 months old to five so I got to experience all of the kind of all my formative kind of growing up years with the food, the culture, my family, both my grandparents bringing me up. Um, my mum was around, but she really just left me out as my granddad's shadow. Mm-hmm. So all of um, it's very much a nostalgic brand. And when people come and they, they hear the story and they eat the food, I think all our kind of like fellow Chinese Malaysians can kind of relate to their Amar and their Akong kind of mm-hmm. um, what it was like and the stories and stuff. So it's uh, it's very much a brand that's rooted in our specific Nonya Peranakan heritage. Um, and I was very fortunate along the way when I met Rob, that was kind of the catalyst to like, okay, let's take it from more a story to actually do the food. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when we went to Malaysia because uh, I needed Rob to experience it, um, to experience the, the kind of nuances with that kind of Chinese mm-hmm. Malaysian food to what it had in the UK. And that's when I took you to Malaysia. And then you can continue about your love for Malaysian food. Um, yeah, well, it was quite a strange one for me because to be honest, like before, I've, my, my background in, in catering and cooking is very much European mm-hmm. and uh, Western um, because obviously it sort of has to be. Um, and it's only through I mean like only through this that I've just started to know I basically I'm learning mm. this is the very beginning of my like sort of uh, journey into East Asian cuisine um but I think it's sort of just worked out hasn't it really well because you wanted to do this food thing I always remember like when we were first when I first like started seeing her she kept going on about um she wanted to open a a small place Mm. and one of her dreams was to like open a small place doing uh chicken rice um which at the time I had I actually had like no idea what it was I did Um, actually make you chicken rice until yeah one night I came around she she was like I'm gonna make chicken rice and made it in there got the little rice cooker out and got the paste and like put it on the some on the chicken and the rice and then don't tell people it's a paste I made that from scratch (laughs) (laughs) You can add, yeah, what, what was it, that high, high New chicken rice paste to buy yeah. in with uh, Asian supermarkets. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, just steam the chicken over the Showed you the rice, rice cooker, that was the first revelation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, rice cooker. yeah, before that as well, I've been like like an absolute idiot trying to cook rice, like, <laughs> in a pan, like, and, and, like, and now I go around to, like, all other people that don't have a rice cooker, like, oh, you absolute <laughs> loser. <laughs> The smug and enlightened like rice cooker owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, cooked that for me, and it was so simple. Mm. I was like, "Wow, this is really good." Um, and then, and then, then I, I just make this better. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that yeah. I think like it's, it was more my sort of my expertise Chef. on knowing how to not not knowing about uh, Chinese and Malaysian food, but knowing sort of how things could be scaled and uh, Mm. sort of logistics and stuff so that then that coming together with with like the Hannah's food knowledge and Mm. what she wanted to do it just sort of like came together um Mm. uh, and now yeah um it's great for me because it is my like Asia and East Asian food Southeast Asian food is I think is the best in the world and it's my favorite it's very, um, so it's very broad, just, isn't it? So it's yeah, so yeah. Broad. So it's now I just uh, just have this like privilege to um, to be able to like in sort of indulge my my love of it. Um, mm. Whereas before, I, I really don't think you know that would that would have ever have happened without um, without you wanting to sort of you know start this this thing up. I think also there was a big change, big turning point was actually going to Malaysia. 
Mm. It might like we all know like the version of food you cook that's comfort food is your mum's version or your family version. Mm. So when I took Rob to Malaysia, he he had like a real preference for like Malay food, which is a little bit that's like I didn't like our family just eat like classic nonya food. So I actually got to experience a little bit of like the uh, like a tourist version when I went with Rob because he wanted to go and look at all these places that as a family we didn't we mm. only eat in the same places. Um, and I think they were just fascinated to see Rob just inhale every <laughs> single thing for two weeks. And we know, like, he loves spicy. Always, yeah. like, the most spicy food. Mm. Yeah, it was the... Uh, I just didn't stop eating, basically. I've never, like, experienced anything like that in, before <laughs> in my life because it's such uh, just a much, ni I think, nicer sort of communal food culture there. Mm. People just seem to be eating out all the time and yeah. with each other. Uh, so it was just like you just felt like eating all the time, and yeah, that's what we did basically. Um, that's amazing. And yeah. tell us a bit about where Little Yellow Rice Co is now. I loved hearing that story because it, it just seemed like such a natural, like coming together of like both Hannah, your heritage, and Rob with your expertise being a chef. So where is Little Yellow Rice Co now then? Like for those who haven't heard of you as a as a company before, as a brand, um, what do you sell? Where do you sell? Where are you? So we are now based out of Manchester. We were uh, in Leeds before we moved during the pandemic, which was fun. Um, but we predominantly do supper clubs so we do an experience-based um, dinner where it's a set menu and people mm -hmm. come and I tell the story about um, that we had a rice cone really just to kind of make people aware about the nuances with like Southeast Asian and food you know that um, I really hate it when people say I like Chinese food because mm -hmm. it's a massive place you know so I'm kind of doing my little bit of my little bit of story and um awareness in what we do and then we'll provide each of the dishes we'll have a little bit of um information as well about where that dish came from because with malaysia all the food is like has so many different origins you know it's it's class malaysian dish but it'll have elements of thai or have elements mm. of like filipino food etc so um we kind of it's more of an experience and i think most people that come are ready for the four course meal or five course meal but then they don't expect me to be kind of talking for an hour and a half which is an added bonus obviously <laughs> <laughs> down there it is <laughs> <laughs> um and we kind of it's a really good chance to like i get all my trinkets out and all the petite yeah. cloths that i've brought back from malaysia yeah. we uh, laboriously brought back all the cutlery and crockery so when you sit down you feel like you could be at a hawker stall mm. um so we do the supper clubs across leeds manchester sheffield london um we also then had to um pivot during lockdown and have a shop that we sell um our uh, chili sauces which is more kind of rob's uh, labor of love because we found out that i'm highly allergic to chili fumes so <laughs> no <Robert. laughs> responsible like rob makes the uh, the chili oil i think that's his now like labor of love is to make mm. each batch um in his eyes better than the last batch <laughs> i think that goes with all the food though i yeah. think i think for most like chefs or you know good mm. chefs and good cooks you never you're never happy with what you've done. Yeah. Uh, there's always, mm. like, you finish it and you have this sort of, like, I don't know what, how to, like, explain it. You sort of, like, beat yourself up about it. Uh, you never, like, in, well, for me, anyway, I'm never fully, like, content. There's always, mm. like, oh, I could have done that. Oh, next time I'll do this. Um, and kind of um, how have you found... Obviously, being being the chef part and the um, cooking expertise um, that you bring to Little Yellow Rice Co., how have you found the reception from the East and Southeast Asian community? Obviously, you know, like you say, with the privilege of being a white man cooking this food, ha have you found the reception has been welcoming? Obviously, I mean, for me, I see you as like the conduit to Hannah's, you know, knowledge of the culture etc and you're kind of the putting those things into practice yeah, and kind of delivering yeah. it on a plate <laughs> you totally, know what I mean yeah I totally agree with that um such, um, a, it's a, it's, such a nice way of putting it as well yeah. <laughs> just the conduit the Rob, yeah, it's, it's weird Rob it's like, is the conduit <laughs> it's, it's with this food it's like it's it's sort of not it's not my cooking 
Mm. Um, well, it obviously it is, but the the reason I'm doing it is it's not you know it's not merely it's not for me, and I'm trying to make it as close to possible as sort of how it. Or yeah, maybe not think of it how it's sort of like commonly like known and experienced, and how you remember it. And like when I'm looking for like when I'm doing a new recipe, um, I'll go through like multiple recipes on the internet and try and find the sort of like the common factors and and techniques until I can come to like a, a sort of formulation like okay, I'm gonna do it this way, and then Hannah will try it, and I'll be like, mm. how is that? You know, is that right? Is that <laughs> and some, sometimes she's like, that... but the time it's like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. And other times she'll just be like, no, that's you know, it's too spicy or, mm. too or something. Always more ginger. Always more ginger. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. more, don't be shy on the ginger, Rob. So um, yeah, I'm not yeah. really doing it. Uh, sort of for my yeah, my uh, I, yeah. I think it's um brings like us to th that wider discussion around gatekeeping and who can cook mm. food from like culture that a culture that isn't theirs because you know it's not like you're front facing and you're not trying to reinvent anything like everything is so well researched and obviously Hannah and your story you're the the face of everything that you do with Little Yellow Rice Co I think it's where I think like people see an issue with it when white people are trying to reinvent and change something and kind of like make it better in the western gaze which is not the case at all I don't think yeah, I think it, the thing mm. is, like, with what we're doing is we're not inventing anything. Yeah. And we're very clear, like, nothing, none of these recipes are new. The mm. whole point of it is it's a heritage run, and that's first and foremost about going back and elevating those some of those forgotten dishes. And there's nothing I think I love more than when my mum will come out with a gem, like the Juhu Cha, and then we kind of, we made it and we posted it and people are like, oh my God, I've not seen that for so long. I haven't seen that dish. Mm -hmm. I thought that dish was forgotten. Um, and I get other like Penangites, like Kit, Kit Eats. And he's like, when he praises it, you know, like, oh, it's such a good wow. feeling. Like, yeah. He's like, oh, I haven't. And we had someone that came to the Malaysia Games and they hadn't had the Hongbak. Like, mm -hmm. like last time I had this, my grandma made it and you made a little YouTube video for it and posted oh. it. And it was like, it was like just a video of him like eating it and like it's so delicious I haven't had this since my grandma in Malaysia and I was like this is why we do it mm. like, just and so it's yeah it's definitely not reinventing anything and when people come and we get like the aunties come to like Robin there was one auntie she was like going through all of our pots <laughs> and I never take credit for it because I don't I don't do the technical cooking on that side mm. so like I directed her to Robin she was so impressed like okay he knows what this is and he's using the right ingredients and he can tell her which store to go and buy it from in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best like sort of feedback and praise you can get is from people that like properly know the food. Mm. Um, and when they say it's good, that's that's basically all, all that I'm looking for. Mm. Um, I'm not trying well, to please everyone. Well, you got the um, Papa Wong seal of approval for you. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say, I think probably the, that was probably like, the one that I think of most was you always saying oh, like your dad loved it and oh yeah like, he's still and, like sometimes it's like oh that's they you know it tastes like uh like the one my dad would cook uh, yeah yeah it's, it's really nice praise but it also makes me feel a bit like uh I don't know not awkward but mm. sort of like sort of imposter syndrome feeling I think um it's like I don't really like you know deserve to be cooking the food I don't know it's, it's pretty it's a bit of a difficult one but um, <laughs> yeah I, it's, I, I also there is a bit of like selfishness that I love this food and I really enjoy cooking it and I now can um, yeah. and it's, it's like, without feeling like, like really guilty and, and yeah enjoying it but you kind of respect the privilege to be able to cook this food and learn about this food you know and yeah. I think that's really important mm. and, yeah I just I'll take that. Try and just always remember that I don't actually know anything about it really. Ultimately, I don't know anything about this food. I'm, mm. I'm always learning and I just always uh, sort of listen to feedback. And yeah, just like um, when we did our supper club at Hackney Chinese, um, I was sort of confronted with this. Um, proper traditional Chinese kitchen which is just a range of wok burners <laughs> and I was 
honestly, I was absolutely shit. That's myself. scary. That's intimidating <laughs> um, as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, like, how am I going to do this? Mm. But um, uh, luckily, yeah, uh, Celestial Peach, Jenny, mm. enlisted some kitchen assistants for me. Uh, her mate, yeah. uh, JY, Jia Ong. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's good. I've got some, like, assistants. But it wasn't actually just assistants. It was like, it was so useful because he like, I was like, he knew so much more about me than all the food, Mm. about all the food and recipes and stuff. It's like, I was there in the kitchen, like basically Mm. learning from him, even though he's not, even though he's not a chef or a cook, he does a lot of cooking in his own time, but. He actually works in um, tech infrastructure. Yeah, so (laughs) it was was really good to like be with someone that. Yeah. No, so I, you know, I wasn't in there being like, oh, you know, this is, my food this is how I do it um, That's, that was a really intimidating event as well because I would say like the majority of our events the attendees are uh, yeah. beastly heritage um but they were the majority of that event were actual Chinese Malaysians <laughs> so scary. um and and also it was like the people in the kitchen the guys that yeah. run Hackney Chinese uh, they are like old Chinese uncles that used to serve <laughs> at the same dim sum, tr- it, like the yum cha place I've been eating at since I was four. Yeah. Uh, I was like speaking to the guy and he was like, oh my God, you used to work in that restaurant. I've been eating this since I was four. So I was a little bit starstruck by this guy who's <laughs> like yeah. at the Hackney Chinese place. And I like, ring him, I'm like, you know that, that yum cha place we used to eat at? This guy that we used to work there is here. And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's amazing though, that like, I think with any expert, or with any person who specializes in something, you never you never see yourself as an expert. You can kind of see yourself as a student who's always learning. And I think that's a really brilliant place to start. Like you said, you know, there's so much about Perenican food that we, there's so much to explore. And like, you know, this is only from one perspective and there's so many other and like rich and multicultural perspectives that um, haven't been explored yet. So I think it's like a really... Um, really really grounding position to be in where you're not trying to um i guess position yourself as the expert of all asian food for example which we have seen we have seen people do that um so i i really kind of yeah i think it's amazing and your food is incredible as well i think that's like such a big thing for us well like we someone said we did a we, we made a dish and we put it on our instagram account and someone mm. said oh why didn't you serve it with your own chili sauce and we're like because we're not crazy. Laugamar is the best chili sauce. We're not going to try and say we're better than Laugamar. Yeah, we're just like, we're not... Who would do that? Who would <laughs> claim <laughs> their chili sauce is better we're than Laugamar? We're not seen just trying right? to sell stuff, are we, as well, all the time. We're not thinking, yeah, that no, means... you know, this is about us. This is about selling. It's, it's not about that. It was like, that's we just probably... want to share this this recipe and this food. I think yeah. that's um, one of the... There's no ego or, like... Mm. But it's one of the critiques um, we actually got from our... Um, from some of our peers was that oh why don't you charge more like I think like Jay I was like someone else was saying like you need to charge this for tickets that's it so like well we don't we don't go it from that kind of commercial perspective we do it because we want it to be accessible mm. and the whole point is I want more people to eat it so I'll go in and say oh I had this really good nostalgic Malaysian food or oh I tried Malaysian food for the first time it's like oh it's not actually Malaysian food it's Peranakan it's Nonya and mm-hmm. have more of an understanding of like the, the diversity in that country mm-hmm. we don't really kind of like if we did we would probably would like to not sell online but people keep asking for the chili sauce so now we're stuck we have to keep making it <laughs> sorry guys it's all my fault <laughs> <laughs> keep buying the chili oil no, i should bought some for a while i need to i need to get back on that um how do you how do you ensure hannah that you know the food you are creating yourself and rob how, how do you ensure that it is close to what you ate at home you know what what are your benchmarks for it because food is so personal you know and you'll have so many things like you say everyone thinks that the best food they eat is their family's version of whatever it might be how do you kind of ensure that you are getting to what that was how can you even remember because I you know like you said you grew up to that to the age of five you know did you grow up eating it kind of past that age I, if I try to recreate anything that my dad makes I'm not even sure I'd know where to start, to be honest. Um, I think, well, I, I've, I have like a really privileged upbringing of being able to go back to Malaysia every every other year. And I do that now. 
um and we get a lot of feedback like really positive feedback from our family like my auntie maggie will tell us like what tools like for the suyuk she was the one that showed us like what little that, that stabby device that you need to make good suyuk so it's good and crispy um <laughs> And I know exactly time. what stabby device you're talking yeah. about as well because my dad has one. <laughs> but I think we're just to the point of like again you know where we lose money we're painstaking on making sure that we like Rob will get the right ingredients that like we'll find the recipe and then we will or we'll get the recipe from like my cousins or my aunties and we'll painstakingly try and find out what that ingredient is because obviously they have loads of different mm -hmm. names which has been half the fun of it is like I call it one thing in, in Hokken and then Rob's looking it up and it's actually in Mandarin or Cantonese or something completely different. It's like, hang on, this is the same thing as that thing is. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, it's really, we don't cut corners. We will spend that time looking for that item. We've got really good suppliers. Sometimes we have to bring the stuff in. Like we get, sometimes we get it imported in from Malaysia and then we realise, oh, this is the same nut that we could get in the supermarket. <laughs> but it's like... It's just not cutting corners, mm. you know, you have to just um, just do that work to make sure that you get, mm. the, you're kind of delivering the same thing and we get plenty of feedback, you know, that's the nature of uh, this kind of audience is everyone is very uh, straight talking, so <laughs> people will tell us uh, that's not right, that's not right, yeah. and no, there's no, there's no affront to, oh no, someone didn't like our food, that's fine, we have to keep, mm. keep mixing up, making it improve on it. Um, within reason because you know it's not going to taste like everybody's mums we know we're not that good but <laughs> I think yeah it's, it is about you know it's it's definitely it's probably different to a lot of other food businesses it's a heritage brand it's about finding making it so people can carry it on we need to find out what those particular ingredients are and translate to so that other people can also start having a go at making the food and um, in their own homes and doing it but it just takes a long time you know we, we spent a good year before we launched the business just refining dishes like we didn't go out and thought oh, i would just like crack on and like put yeah. food out we spent like so long well, the still sort of the stuff for me anyway this is still not finished um, mm. any yeah. of the food. Um, i think our friends like so much chicken rice like um, is there too much chicken rice though? Because I don't think there's too much chicken rice. For me, never. There's never too much chicken rice. <laughs> I think it's really funny as well how you talk about ingredients. Um, it reminded me this weekend I made some low back go with my dad for Lunar New Year. And he was like, this is a very expensive low back go. And I was like, what do you mean? It's just like, you know, muley, lap chung, um, that kind of thing. He was like, I had to import these, um, the dried shrimp from Hong Kong. My friend had to send them by UBS. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is there dried shrimp, shrimp everywhere? He was like, no, it needs to be these ones. And I'm pretty sure it didn't. Such an Asian parent flex, isn't it? Like my mum always <laughs> has to mention, these are really expensive. I got them sent to me all the way from Hong Kong and like have to like express it so many times to like let you know how much it's worth. <laughs> I can't get my head around like why my mum has curry leaves wrapped in newspaper in the freezer that she brought back from Sri Lanka when you can buy that in the normal supermarket no different. it's not it's not different. the same Hannah it's not the same <laughs> um kind of kind of going off that um obviously you know you now have come to appreciate the east and southeast asian cuisine and you know i would say well you've just said kind of that's where your passion lies now obviously you were kind of a french French trained chef is that how you would describe it um before this Rob um what how is how has your experience been kind of in the chef world and kind of transitioning from being a traditionally um trained chef to um you know someone who is embodying a, a cultural heritage and like you say constantly learning and you know maybe not being the expert expert but kind uh, of... I think it's that's quite difficult because before I've not actually worked for anyone doing East Asian uh, cuisine, um, I'm you know I'm sort of building this and learning on my own, um, and haven't really worked in a professional environment um, uh, doing East Asian cuisine. Um, so yeah, that's quite a difficult question. Uh, I think. It's hard to compare what it would be like in the professional working world, but I think for me, it, it feels a lot more natural. Um, obviously, because I in, I enjoy the food a lot more, but I think just the 
as I'm learning and the techniques and and everything, it just feels um, sort sort yeah much more natural, more like intuitive to me and my like how I cook. Um, uh, it's not to say you still don't go on about French cooking and that time yeah, you yeah, in France. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just love um, being able to do this um, without, yeah, like I said before, without um, the sort of maybe the guilt and anxiety I would have had before, because mm. uh, I'm quite a, um, you know, Hannah would tell you that I'm quite a, quite an anxious and overthinking uh, person at times. Um so be doing something like this would would have been really really difficult in any other uh, circumstance. Um, mm. I would have had a lot of, like a, a huge amount of like self doubt and uh, uh, things like that. Um, so what I have just heard there is Hannah has brought out the best version of you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the way Hannah was just looking at Rob was so sweet. <laughs> it's like the sweetest I've ever seen you look, Hannah. Like. <laughs> Don't ever you say it with one. your eyes. You say it with your eyes. Your no, eyes Hannah, Hannah's just thinking of like the, all the food that she gets to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never say you're an anxious so jealous. I uh, always say you're yeah. an anxious bean. I always make it far more gentle. <laughs> I think it's very good to be able to admit that, especially as a man, to be able to talk about like mental health and um, things like that is, is a very, very um, brave thing to be able to do. Uh, yeah, it's, which it, it makes me like sort of struggle to understand how uh, other, a lot of other, maybe people in a, well, not, not a similar situation, but certain brands and food businesses. I won't, mm -hmm. I won't like name any names, but Go on. it just like, <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it, just, it just sort of stresses me out how they're just so. Yeah. like they just go into it so like sort of blase mm. and like say yeah I'm, I'm doing this food mm -hmm. uh for instance saying oh this is traditional chinese buns when actually <laughs> they're doing um open bao which is like taiwanese in origin and, and then saying that they're and like their branding is based on the mm. fact that they watched kung fu panda or something <laughs> 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 there's a lot there's, there's yeah. loads of businesses where they're just like because i think in like in recent years doing east asian food i think even like now it's getting more and more sort of sort of trendy in a way it's mm. kind of a bit sort of like yeah it has sort of it? like hipster pastime to yeah be like, oh i'm into ramen know, especially ra yeah i'm like, into ramen yeah. or I'll, I'll, you know i'm doing a Thai pop up or something, and, and it's mm. just like, but what? But why? Like, what's this, what's the story? Like, that's what I always wonder. Uh, like, why? Why are you focusing on this so much? Like, when because food is like, reason? for me, it's so like I can't detach it from sort of like history. It's you know, food is people's history and identity, and it's not really it's it's not really something just to be like sort of pissed around with is it um it's a difficult one because a lot of the food is very symbolic and has meaning of why we of why it's eaten at certain times and why why those ingredients are used and yeah. like i think there's certain foods where you can probably you know pretty much get away with like oh it doesn't really matter like you know what like a burger or something yeah. um mm. which, yeah. right, which has sort of like like very, very like vague origins and you know like doesn't you know but when it's when people are taking whole sort of like cultures and regional food and just just doing it sort of for the fun of it and that yeah that, that I, I struggle to understand how people can like do that without you know like you know not questioning and like having you know like anxiety about it i, I do think mm. it's important to say like i don't agree with like the gatekeeping of it and we're never yeah i'm never disparaging on people that are like oh i really enjoy that food and mm. i'm gonna make it i'm gonna try and learn and and kind of recreate that food i think that that has become an issue over the past couple of years as well as like mm. the gatekeeping of it um and i would never i would never be disparaging on people that say oh you know no. i've got no i've got no affiliation to that food you know i really it's that like context often. isn't it about you know, yeah what they're doing and, and why they're doing it if 
if someone is doing, you know, a, a regional food from an, another culture and they're just, you know, they're really knowledgeable about it and they're, you mm. know, they're actually, you know, they're not saying something is what it isn't and they're not twisting it and then still saying it that this is traditional or yeah and you know it's it's actually fine to like I think even take a a certain food and say that you're inspired from it and then say Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by this and this is you know my twist and as long as you're saying right this isn't that thing and I'm not Mm. I'm not doing that I think uh, we would no, never get away okay. with that. My mum would absolutely be on top of us. <laughs> <Your mom. laughs> Auntie would be raining down on them. I think it is like, you know, I when I see people, like, say, for example, a white person cooking food that isn't theirs, like, there is that initial curiosity. I'm like, oh, I wonder why. And then I think when you, it's everything around that, like you said, like the context, the respect for the culture, the acknowledgement that this is not their culture and they are inspired by it. Mm-hmm. I think all of that, like, makes such a difference if you're going to like i don't know use that brand or or um buy from that brand um but yeah i think we could talk about this for ages um i wanted to ask actually because we had for east and southeast asian heritage month last year uh, you both put on an amazing event uh, the congee club event in manchester which was so good um and i think charlie mentioned earlier that your dad came along and loved it and the congee was amazing um and we wanted to ask um uh, what are your congee um tips or what's your recipe for it how did you make it so good because i can't recreate it myself at home to be that smooth and uh, are you sure so you just put more cheese on <laughs> it still doesn't like it still doesn't um like cover the fact that the rice isn't it never <laughs> breaks down properly you know well that's because you're very particular aren't you um, on how you make your rice how do you do it uh, just just keep cooking it no it doesn't work <laughs> I think, no, surely I, I, there I, must be more to it to it than that you, you made congee for me the first time so yeah i wouldn't know i was probably just guided by um, the rice I uh, yeah know. obviously i've just um i've eaten it out quite a few times and then did my mm. research various kind like, of rice. And, uh, but yeah i use um jasmine rice R- um use raw rice and then r- what i do is soak it first um for yeah. about half yeah. an hour and then drain that water off and then put that rice into the freezer uh, oh, that takes fucking ages yeah it's like it's a bit of like a I want it now this just sort of shortens the cooking time though so but when mm. yeah so when you put it in the freezer yeah the water that's gone into the rice yeah and it freezes sort of like expand and start breaking the rice down mm. so then when you then go to start um boiling it which I, if i can remember i think is about one one part rice to eight parts water mm. um it will just cook a lot more quickly and you'll get uh a s- sort of smoother finish if that's what you want because some people right. obviously can prefer congee with, I mean, with a little bit more bite and like saucy yeah. uh, like grains and this is the issue is like rob's cooking ability for like east asia food has exceeded mine because he spends so much time mm. reading like auntie's blogs <laughs> again um, you know like i i'm, I'm like i just want to cook my dinner in 30 minutes or yeah. <laughs> or have it prepped whereas you know, Rob will have spent like like half a day reading multiple sources of like, mm. oh, you could put it in the freezer and that short. It's like, no, I'm not doing that. I just I'm not the doing that. Just this, but, uh, that is the most comprehensive uh, congee recipe I've heard because we all try to ask our parents. But like, I asked my mum, she was just like, just add rice with water. And yeah, that's that it. Is, and I'm like, that is it. that's right. That's, that's... No, because you put it in the freezer and you didn't <laughs> no, you, you have to do You're that. doing the whole mm. soaky, soaky thing, one, one part of this, eight parts yeah. that. Yeah. That's the that's the yeah. unfair bit is because he's a chef. You know, has like this yeah. like technical know how. He can work out like, oh, the ingredient will. If you put that and that help it break, I wouldn't know that. Like, no. why are you putting in the freezer? I wouldn't for? know to break down. Yeah, I'd be like, why are you doing that? It's just gonna take up freezer space and yeah, delay the eating for congee. My rice. Yeah, the congee yeah. at Chef Dow Wall Street on Sunday. It's fucking banging. It's so good, you know. Oh, it's the best. Definitely have to get some of that. One. It's yeah. gonna be better than last congee. congee. That'll be. I have a- to say, it's the best congee I've had in such a long time. The best, con- the best congee I had recently was uh, when we went to the Things Palace pop up 
Lor- oh, to uh, Lorcan's, Lorcan, Lorcan yeah. Khan's Things Palace. Is that um, London? No, it was at Mackie Mayer. Oh. And he put, what's that mush, golden lion, golden lion mushroom? The one where it's like, it looks like a mane. Oh, right. Is it like oyster mane. mushroom almost? Oh. But it's got like, it looks like a lion's mane because it's got like all yeah, the Yeah, it's a more delicate. Um, yeah, that was, it was like very premium. But he had but got very good silkiness was, on this congee. Yeah, the congee was so yeah. good tasty it was just like the best one i'd ever had really it's a shame he moved to australia and law can can't also have Mal- malaysian descent malacca oh. they do good rice in malacca they know what they're doing <laughs> yeah i'm just um, trying to like learn everything like that and just learn the you know the best like techniques and ways of doing that just this morning i was like watching like i think i watched about four or five youtube videos on like how to like portion up a, a whole poached chicken <laughs> you know in that when it's gets you just get a meat cleaver and you just go ah, <laughs> no, ah. no yeah you, oh. it's like it's, re- it's actually quite complicated okay so like take the backbone out and then like the drumsticks off the wings off and then you split the breast in half and then i don't know why you look at me i'm not even allowed to touch the knives <laughs> yeah it's just like because i really want safety reasons that the so that's my that's my next thing then so when we do chicken rice if we do a full chicken we can do it like that yeah i think this is the issue is like we um we will never kind of, we don't have the amount of time that rob does to like do this research that's why i think you and like celestial peach you and jenny can like you're on the same vibe of just researching and uh getting mm. these techniques distilled into what's like what, what's the best or maybe best rob you what you need to do is come spend a day with papa wong because papa wong knows all this stuff yeah. and also he's already watched all these vid- these youtube yeah, videos yeah. that would um, have like Something like that would be like that'd be a dream, wouldn't it? Let, let me set it up for you. Let me do a little yellow rice co pop along collaboration. Yeah, thing. Have my phone out and just filming the everything. And the, you know. the other day, he asked me to go make low back gold with him. He was like to learn how to do it. And I, I, as soon as I arrived, I was like, Dad, I'm never going to make this. I'm just here to spend time with you. But he still told me every single step painstakingly. Oh, you that might make it in the future. I won't. What am I going to do with like that much low back go? I mean, give I really it me. Give it. give it me. But uh, it's never going to be as good as my dad. So what's the point in trying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we've not got long left, and there was something else. Um, yeah, I can make a we. we that's got. the one that I really want. Is the we've got. It's like a it's a taro with like, it's like a mince in the middle the taro, woo. and it turns into like a bird. That's the one you like, isn't it, Viv? The woo. The, yeah, uh, the wool. Yeah. Uh, we've got. Oh, yeah, we'll make... got, yeah oh i love that oh we'll again it, where did we have that and that was amazing it was chef dow i think as well oh my. i've got high hopes for the chef dow on sunday yeah i know it was so amazing like so soft inside and really crispy on the outside mm. was it from there oh no yeah no yeah it was yeah it was it was so good mm. it's good for the non-manchester audience <laughs> yeah 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 sorry everyone who's not from manchester Maybe you should come, come to, Manchester. to Manchester. Yeah, exactly. Everyone... This is what I hate is like people think Manchester is so far away and they come up from London like, oh, it's only two hours on the train. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've been saying this for years. I think it's easier <laughs> to get. I think that's another thing that's made it so sort of easy for us to be able to do our food business. It's because of mm. being in Manchester. The ingredients. The, the access we yeah. have and the supermarkets available. Mm. Like, can just so get, at any point, I can basically just get anything <laughs> Rob, I've seen you so many times in the Chinese <laughs> supermarket. You know, the, I was the like, there's Rob. The Chinese auntie in Hang On Sing and Hang On Hong, she gives him freebies now at the counter. What? No, not that, that is like next level. Time. You came home the other week with some special sweets she gave you and you <gasps> didn't even share it. <laughs> Scandal. Built up a loyalty card. <laughs> Um, we've not got very long left, but there was something else we wanted to touch on. Um, obviously, we all also do something else in our spare time other than eat food. Um, we all work in digital di- in digital comms in some way or another. So, um, Hannah, I don't know if you want if you've kind of got any tips about those people looking to get into digital comms because obviously you own your own your own um, Agent. business. Agency, <laughs> that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> um, Any tips? And I've run and I've been in marketing for so long because I'm so <laughs> old now. Um, <laughs> it is true. I've been in marketing like 17 years now. That's Jeez. old. Um, I think what, like, the one thing I would say, like, for 
for anybody either going in looking to get into digital comms or has a business is the one thing we wax lyrical on is community um find your community look to build a community marketing isn't about selling it's about building a base of people and that works whether you want to get into marketing go and find the find people out there that are working in the area that you want to work in that you have a passion in don't just plug into an agency go and find the agency that fits what you want to do mm -hmm. or the business I worked in-house I wasn't even in agency I was in-house marketing for like 10 years and I think my favorite job was working in the lift industry which doesn't sound like exciting marketing but they were great people and I was allowed to like do whatever I wanted I wow. got an exhibition at Excel selling lifts that had circus performers and my best mate doing an aerial hoop thing um with like a magical uppity box theme and they just let me do whatever I wanted Whoa. nobody Sounds wanted like... that gig yeah. in, in lift marketing and I took it at 26 was the best five years I ever did in marketing sounds like they really elevated you they just let me do what I want um you know like, <laughs> no one get it. the joke <laughs> <laughs> no one get the joke oh, jeez no. yeah I'm gonna um, I'm silent now I'm done <laughs> can we edit that out <laughs> how did no one get the joke <laughs> maybe it was the delivery of the joke maybe it wasn't maybe it wasn't our fault at all sorry I was interrupting you, know you but the, I really um, wanted to say the joke the best bit is that company was called Shorts Lift and I would always get the same gag because I'm only four foot eleven is, <laughs> oh, you're the marketing manager and the mascot. <gasps> that is rude. Yeah. You're a yeah. short queen. <laughs> yeah. So what have you got coming up then for uh, both Little Yell Rice Co and Consume Comms as well? Well, we are doing a, um, we've been very good this year and have done business <laughs> planning. <laughs> so we've got a nice bit of synergy running between Consume Comms and Little Yellow Rice mm. Coast. So we're doing our EC showcase at the moment. So we're showcasing EC role models, career pathways on Consume Comms and creatives and makers. So Viv, I think your face will be popping up in the next couple of weeks as well, because we're going to repost our IGTV. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, nice. Um, and we're showcasing on Little Yellow Rice Co, EC Yay. makers um, I'm very excited tomorrow that we've got our film screening of Kung Fu Hustle, um, Stephen Charles Kung Fu Hustle, which was yeah, classic. Cool watch. Um, and then we will have our EC Marketplace. That I'm trying not to buy all the stock myself because it's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I am so excited! I'm going to be buying so much. Yeah, I, I just can't even get around all these earrings. I'm going to end up buying. Um, <laughs> and then we've got some private supper clubs, um, and we're going back to Leeds next week. To do a kitchen takeover eat your greens um which is really good fun it's like 50 people and i never thought we'd be doing an event that's like 50 that's amazing 50 covers um it'd be quite a lot of work for rob cooking it's really quite a lot of work it'd be great for you hannah bring bring the passion I'm, I'm, of it i'm quite starting to get a little bit stressed about it to be honest but that's that's <laughs> your role that's why i'm the project manager um, <laughs> no it'll be all right it'll be easier than last time yeah it's a set menu We've got like, yes, yeah, so we've got like a couple of like pop-up food things coming, but then I'm also in the background working on um, some stuff to kind of for eat that's like specifically for Anna Can. So I'm going to do a high, a Hocken family tree that's illustrated. Um, so for people that are kind of oh. forgetting like how to speak Hocken um, and what you call your grandma and your second cousin and your third auntie and all that. So <laughs> we've got lots of like interesting things for you all planned out on a beautiful calendar now. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. I'll be buying. <laughs> um, yes, that's fine. Maybe in Malaysia at the end of the year. Oh, yeah. And then hopefully we're finally going back to Malaysia in November with um, for my mother's uh, birthday. So we'll be there for a whole month. And then from Malaysia, flying to Hainan for the first time oh, to go to our ooh. clan house. Ooh. That is so exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, final question then, um, before we wrap up, the most important question of the um, podcast. If you were to have, I've just messed up the final question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what would your ideal three course meal be um, with description of what it is, if, if it's not clear, please? Goes to both of you. Just quick, like, don't yeah. even think about it, just whatever comes to mind. So mine is a mix of different cultures. So I would have bruschetta starter. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Bruschetta. bruschetta. I would have my chicken rice. 
Obviously, yeah. Ionanese chicken rice, Singaporean, mm-hmm. is, it's not the same. <laughs> um, and then for dessert, I would have pecan pie. That's my favourite dessert. Oh, very, a very broad mix there. Yeah, I like that. I, I didn't expect the pecan pie, pie, though. I didn't expect the bruschetta. That threw me a bit. Mm. I've never even pecan pie. I've been telling you to make me gypsy tart for so you long. Can't like I'm not it even from What's Kent. that? What's gypsy tart? Gypsy tart is like a classic Kent nice. dessert. It's just treacle and condensed Ew. milk. Basically oh, jeez. And put it into a cake tin. And mm. that is a very traditional Kentish food. That's my other second heritage food that I love. <laughs> <laughs> what would yours be, Rob? For me, I think I like mussels in some way. Ooh. That's one of my favourite things. Yeah, I love time. mussels. And then... I think it would probably have to be char koi chow. I knew it was coming. <laughs> still probably just like my favourite dish ever, like street side fried noodles. Mm. Um, and then dessert. I'm not. I'm not big on desserts. So yeah, I'd probably go go for a cheese board. He says oh, that. Really good. You really, always, really good cheese. You always yeah. say I'm not keen on desserts, but every time I go out, you always have some kind of chocolate ganache. <laughs> Unlimited chocolate yeah, but, dessert. I, but, but that's because that's the option. Like I would, you know, if it is any choice, I would choose cheese board. Savory. Over. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I do love desserts as well, though. I just love everything, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Rob lost chocolate out to the point of he was just wandering around Malaysia, just like repeating like chocolate out. <laughs> like, what's, what's he saying? What's he saying? What's the matter with him? Oh, he's just saying chocolate towel. And then one, the one, him. one hawker did actually seem. Me, like saying it and, and he thought that I wanted it and was like oh okay I'll make yeah like, oh, no I was just uh... I'm just muttering <laughs> like a tick <laughs> I was just walking over there like oh chow go chow he nearly started cooking it right no no I don't like just Rob yeah. can you make some for us please we only live, uh, we only live around yeah, the corner yeah, from you after like like last time we did it here set the fire alarm off I don't care off. Um, <laughs> I'm still waiting for my seal yuck you've promised me oh he's doing it today actually he's doing some seal yuck <gasps> oh well how convenient that I'm seeing you I live tomorrow. around the corner from you remember that I we continuously have... offer to give you food parcels <laughs> when you post that you've got no food or toilet roll we're still waiting to do a like a big um, dim sum restock we just mm. have like one day of making loads and loads of our favourite dim sum and then just fill the freezer <gasps> get it out anymore. Can I help you make some? I did, I did promise it. that like yeah, Charlie a while back. You did, and I'm still waiting. Yeah, Wait, so no, I just want to eat it actually. I don't want to help make it. I take that back. I just want to eat it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it bosses. soon, like when we've got a bit of time. Just do it now, Rob. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's not working for Consume Commons right now, so I don't even know what you're doing today. <laughs> Start prep for. We don't care. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we were joined by the two co-founders of Little Yellow Rice Co., Natalie, Hannah, Natalie, oh, uh, ha- Hannah, Natalie, <laughs> that's Hosani. a terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, Natalie, Hosani, and Rob, Robert Allen. Uh, you can find them on Instagram at Little Yellow Rice Co., or, or you can follow them on Instagram, Hannah, Natalie, underscore, O. Oh, as in OH, or um, Rob with two Bs, 1984. Giving away your age there. Oh, it's, it's, it? it's a good sounding year as well, though, isn't it? Like 1984. 1984, George Orwell. Yes, books, like it's in loads of song lyrics. Why is it O because it's Oi Hosani? It just sounds good as well, 1984. Wait, Hannah, why is yours O? O Hos- Oi. It's my mum's, it's the little yellow rice coat, yeah. Oi, and then Hosani. Ah, oh, I see. Like, yeah. I just thought it was like, oh, oh. Yeah, also, I, also I've, I've, I've actually only just learned that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to you both for joining today. It was really nice having you on the podcast. Hannah's looking at my accent. I'm trying to do your kind of like Kent That's, accent. You sound like it, like you could be like a, an Australian. Well, well, that's rude, but okay. Uh, thank <laughs> you for coming on. Um, it's been a pleasure, and we'll see you on Sunday for some dim sum for Luna New Year. Will you not see them tomorrow? tomorrow oh yeah. shit! I'll see you tomorrow at Grub Manchester when you're doing your EC Makers event. It's going to be loads of fun. And I'm going to eat loads of donuts. 
Lovely. Well, thanks for having us on. Um, next time we can run a separate podcast for Punk and Flum. <gasps> both send their regards. Oh, baby girl. Yeah. The rabbits. Baby these girl, are, these are the two. Down. We need to, everyone needs to follow both of your accounts because they have really cute rabbits who are super, super fluffy and cute. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.